So something really crazy has happened today across Spain and Portugal. There's been a power outage, so like a full blackout now for over four hours already. And even in Lisbon, Madrid, airports, uh, tubes, sub subways, uh, traffic lights, everything's out. Uh, communication systems, it's unbelievable. And I figured today is a good day to show you something, which is how we've become uh, independent from the grid for our power needs using something that is actually a off the shelf solution that I uh, got, which is these two 400 watts each power uh, solar panels, which, you know, obviously we have enough of that here in Portugal. And these are running via these cables into a battery bank by Anchor. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set this up and also some tips where, which are the, I think, best units to get at the best price point. Yeah, in hopes that if this happens again, and right now you're one of the people stuck without power, this may help you. So yeah, this is my studio now running off of, in essence, solar panels uh, and this battery bank. And that's actually the main reason why I got this, because I was really happy to start running the Rapid Flow Studio fully off of self-made ecological green power. Uh, be off the grid. Of course, it helps to save money, you know, once the costs of this is amortized. But yeah, I mean, just the feeling that I'm able to create music while powering everything from the sun is incredible, which was the main reason for getting this. But in the back of my mind, I did have a little bit of a think about, well, it's nice to have a backup also. This is the box that's right now keeping our household going. And honestly, it's not that big. It's called an Anchor F2600. As you can see here, we're now currently pulling 359 watts from it and we're getting 689 from the solar panel. So net positive, we could actually hook up more stuff to this uh, if we needed to. But yeah, we don't need more than this. It's running the fridge and a few other kind of essential things. What's nice about this unit is that it has wheels and kind of like this carrying handle because obviously the batteries in here make it pretty heavy. Uh, and it has a reasonable amount of charge also. You can, you have 2,600 watts of battery power. Um, and connecting it and setting it up was extremely easy. The plus and minus actually have different kinds of connectors and they match to the connectors on the solar panel. You see that has a little red thing, that's just black. So that's awesome, you can't really do it wrong. I am wearing rubber gloves just to be 100% safe, but the panels are co are covered. They come in on these cables and go into this splitter that was provided with the box, and that in turn goes into the anchor unit, and there you go. Like literally, the biggest part of actually setting this up was building the stands for the solar panels. So the other part of being sort of independent for our work, you know, besides being able to power fridges and basic things like that is actually having internet and when we moved to Portugal I chose to get a Starlink and now I'm realizing actually in this situation it's perfect because it's also plugged off of the power unit power bank I was going to say off of that big anchor unit and it's giving us internet independent now of the power grid and yes this construction looks a bit funny but it's because these walls are not very hard so I didn't want to risk this thing getting blown off the roof uh, during a storm. So in any case, the combination of a couple of solar panels, Starlink internet, and I guess just some cables to run through your house or your, your flat or whatever, means that you can, even when everything around you goes down, you can actually keep doing your thing and uh, have backup power, most importantly for your fridge. You know, I can right now actually keep working as if nothing's happened. And I've even heard now that the uh, mobile networks have gone down in many places. You can imagine everyone's trying to go onto their mobile network to do stuff and none of those things are working anymore. Okay, so let me walk you through all the devices that I got and why I got them. This is the company that I got them from called uh, Solar Power Supply out of the Netherlands, uh, Hey Tom. They've been exa extremely helpful advising me on what to get, what I would need to make all this work, and also their service and support has been really great. They're not sponsoring this video, but I uh, love promoting businesses doing good things. 
And I ended up choosing to get some uh, assistant by Anchor because I have some of their products and I found them to be extremely reliable. I have USB hubs, Thunderbolt hubs, and yeah, they just work. Build quality is great. And actually a friend of mine had a horrible accident where he burnt down his whole house charging a drone battery of some no-name drone. I've read on the internet that sometimes these boxes made by not so well-known or I guess good manufacturers can cause similar situations where they overheat, start smoking, and in worst case, even catch on fire. So I didn't want to risk that, and I decided to go with what I know, which is Anchor. And the one that I got, this one, the F2600. And the reasons for this is that it has a high enough capacity from its uh, power supply, to almost 2600 watt hours, which means I calculated I could run my studio full tilt for like four hours off of it, and, well, maybe three actually, and uh, if the solar panels are charging that system by 800 watts an hour when the sun is out, I could run it all day. But then, of course, I was also going to need solar panels. And when I started looking at the solar panels, I realized that the ones Anker does themselves are pretty pricey. Uh, let's have a look. This one here. This would be the correct one, which is a 400 watt solar panel. This thing can take up to 800 watts, so I would have needed two of these. And this was one of the reasons why I decided to go with this company to buy all this from, is because they themselves also offer solar panels. So now we're looking at the aluminum power panels. These are the ones I got, they're 400 watts and they're meant to install on a roof, but because we're renting this house, I didn't want to start messing around with drilling holes in the roof, which is why I put them in the garden. So that is basically what I got. And then I just needed some cables because the solar panels are in the garden. It's a bit of a way from here. So these are the ones I got. I got two sets of these, two panels, two sets. So then the final thing that I needed was a mounting system, which is what I got, again, made by this company and very easy to put together. I put them together with my son on a sunny day in winter, getting all this set up ended up mounting these on wooden beams and then some blocks to get them above each other as you just saw in the garden. And that was basically the whole setup. I researched a bit online and you have to be careful with the solar panels of not leaving them out in the sun, full sun, without being connected to something. Apparently they don't like that, so I had them covered. I wore rubber gloves when making the connections just to be safe that, you know, no electricity can somehow jump through me. So that's probably prudent. But actually, other than that, connecting it was a piece of cake, like literally one, two, three, four, five connections and they were up and running. If you're looking to build something like this for maybe a flat, if you have a balcony or access to a little garden or something, you could go for one of these mid-size units. And, you know, you have to check how much peak output power you would want. But a fridge in our case was like 150 watts when it was running, so not that much. Uh, obviously, you can't run a hairdryer off sinks like this because it's too much watts. I mean, this would just about pull a hairdryer. There's huge ones also, like this one here, which has a double the load, but it's also kind of double the price. Um, you can add on additional expansion batteries. I may do that at some point to have more juice in the batteries. You kind of just stack it on top and then you have another thousand watt hours of power that you can charge up from the sun. There's yeah even more capacity ones that you can add. But I think as a starter set, what I can share with you now is that this F2600 combined with the other products that I showed you here in the shop is a very easy to install setup. I'm sure that the uh, wonderful people over at Solar Power Supply would be able to help you to plan a system dedicated to your needs. Shipping over here to Portugal was flawless. And maybe as a final thought, why I think it's always a good idea to buy from reputable brands and authorized dealers especially with something like this. This is like one of the few things I would not buy used because of the batteries, but also because you never know what's been done to a unit like this before you got it. So that's why I decided to get something new. The F2600 actually broke. It got a bug after about four months of use. It wouldn't seamlessly switch over anymore between the input from the wall, the 220 volt, volts power, 230, and the solar panels and I contacted Anchor and they responded on a Saturday within hours and 
I uploaded some logs and they let me know, okay, your unit's broken. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to replace it. So, and that I think is something which you only get if you work with a brand that actually has a customer service that you can get in touch with easily and that is in your time zone and knows how to ship stuff in and out and whatnot. If I had bought this of, I don't know, AliExpress or something, that would have been a very different story. So yeah, my suggestion is to go for quality in something like this, you know, charging batteries and everything like that has some risks and you want to have stuff there that's safe. But actually knowing how complex these systems are to build if you're doing it like kind of the traditional way with, you know, banks of car or truck batteries that you need to connect together and then maintain and everything, this is actually a very easy system set to set up. So I hope this has been an interesting video for you to get a feeling for how easy it is to set up a system for backup power for your home or your business. And maybe in, in closing thoughts, as you probably also now saw from the prices, you know, a system like this for the capacity that I needed is not exactly cheap. I think all in all, I spent roughly 2,500 euros. However, of course, you know, it's tax deductible. It gives me the peace of mind that if power does go out, we have a backup solution. But more than anything, I got this because I know I consume a lot of power with everything I do with my business with this studio. And this system is able to power my studio the whole day off of the sun, which is an incredible feeling. And I'm so happy to be able to do that now and to be absolutely uh, yeah, as ecological, I think, as you can be related to electricity use for a business. So, so I hope this has been an interesting video for you to check out. Uh, I'm hoping by the time you see this power is back. And if not, uh, see if you can reach out to the people from Solar Power Supply and uh, yeah, get yourself sorted. I'm sure there's going to be a run on these kinds of systems after this in, Iber in the Iberian Peninsula. So take it easy. I'll see you on the next video. I know this is very much out of the normal topics of my channel, but I think it's interesting to see how we can all contribute a little bit to a better a type of net carbon balance, but also have a backup solution for power in the case that the grid goes down around you. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Take it easy. Bye bye.